When you open a picture which has two or more channels, you can perform linear and mixing in this tab. First of all, I can show you that I was detecting here mitochondrial marker of used to YFP and autofluorescence from chlorophyll and also transmitted light image. I will pull up a little bit the YFP signal for you to be able to see that there was some signal in the places where I would expect to have only chloroplasts present. This is most probably due to chlorophyll of a fluorescence leaking into my yellow fluorescent protein channel. To be able to remove this signal, which I definitely know shouldn't be there, I can perform linear mixing. I will proceed to the tab, linear mixing. And, and the easiest option is to use the automatic component extraction to ask the software to determine the spectra to be used for unmixing. Auto find automatic component extraction. When I click on it, it immediately asks me how many components do I expect to have in my image. And I have YFP and chlorophyll here, so I select two, OK. And immediately software builds up a spectra-like rather plot for me, uh, provides me with uh, information in the table and shows me on the image which parts or structures on my image were used for building this plot and getting this data. I have two channels. The software looked for an area where a maximum intensity present in GS1 for YFP and it selected this particular spot here. You can see the still the cross here. So this was very high intensity in the GS1 channel. It was sexually saturated, which is not very good for linear mixing, but okay. And then it showed that exactly on this spot in the channel 2, I also had some intensity and it was uh, intensity 11.7. .7. This data was plotted here. This was the range which I was detecting in the GS1 channel from 515 to 610. The intensity for each wavelength is plotted as a one value because it was summed up on the detector. And here is the intensity of the pixels which are in exactly the same position but in the red channel. Then the software did the same for the channel 2. It looked for the area which contains highest possible intensity in the channel 2 and it found the spot here. And the intensity in this spot in the red channel was 255. And then it detected that in exactly the same pixel, but in the green channel, I had pixels of intensity of 29.1. And this information is plotted here. So this is the maximum intensity in this pixel for my red channel. And this is intensity for the same pixel, but in the green channel. The software will automatically assume that two fluorophores cannot be present in the same pixel, in the same structure on my image, which means that these intensities in the GS1 channel was the result of the chlorophyll leaking into it, which means that this intensity should be subtracted from all intensities in my GS1 channel. And the same is valid for the red channel. There are several different options here available and also you can see that the, um, the software automatically color codes the automatically extracted components 1 and 2 in red and green. And since I have YFP, I would like to keep it yellow, so I just can change it right here. You can select or deselect table to be shown to you or not shown. It's this table with the intensity values and the wavelengths values. Lambda coding concerns the, the image I'm mixing, and it's just the way the image is shown to you. Diagram can be presented at spline as normalized to one intensity. If I don't normalize it, then it sets intensity to 255 because I have 8-bit image and I have intensity from 0 to 255. You can select different line width to see it better and you can also select different ways. Um, the graph would show you the that data points, but since these intensities do not have any data points for individual wavelengths, there will be no difference uh, whatever you select here. You can 
assign any of these components as a background. If you would like to remove the chlorophyll from the image completely, you can just assign it as a background and it will be removed. Auto scale automatically scales intensities and uh, channels you want to unmix to comparable values. And there is a option here to show channel with residuals with the pixels which are not unmixed. Since I'm not including TPMT into the linear unmixing, uh, the whole TPMT intensities will go to the residuals. Plus there will be also some pixels which cannot be assigned either to Qi S1 or to Qi2 channels or to component 1 and component 2 channels. To perform unmixing I just need to click on this button, linear unmixing, and I will get a new tab with an unmixed image. Here we go. So this is my component 1, uh, the chlorophyll channel. This is component 2, YFP channel. This is uh, residuals which contain my TPMT. And here I can unclick it. TPMT plus some signal from chlorophyll and some signal from the mitotracker, tracker which couldn't be annotated to either of the components. And it's very, it's straight away uh, visible that I lost quite a lot of signal from my YFP channel. This was the original image. And this is the unmixed image. And when I pull the histogram up, I will be able to see that there is absolutely uh, no signal in the YFP channel overlapping with chlorophyll. This was unmixed and removed. You need to be absolutely sure that you are not erasing any structures which actually belong to the channels which you are trying to unmix. And this requires experience and a lot of controls. Unmixing here was done on, the, on a simple multi-channel image. And this is obviously not an optimal way to unmix images uh, because this is quite a crude estimation. You can get a much better estimation of what intensity should be removed from what channel if you perform a lambda stack, if you, per if you have a lambda stack image. I have it right here. As, as soon as I open the lambda stack image, I can see a lambda uh, mode um, a representation of it, and I can see individual um, channels for each of the detectors I used to make this image. When I click on single channel, I can scroll through individual channels to see which one of them detected the signal, or I can see all channels simultaneously. In the gallery, I will be able to see an image from each of the 32 channels I used for making this image. If I click here on the show text, I will be able to see approximately what range was detected by this channel, by this channel and so on. And there are two ways to show this text, either transparent on the top of the image or underneath the image. It is quite obvious from this lambda stack is that I have two fluorophores. One shows up somewhere around 540 and another shows up after 680. But it also is quite obvious that the tails of their emission spectra do overlap. And this is why I will need unmixing. So again, as I just did with the previous image, I proceed to the unmixing tab. And I can ask again the software to auto find the components on my image. And I have only two components, chlorophyll and YFP here. Sometimes the automatic component extraction doesn't pick the best points on your image. And then it's be better to go in manually. I will delete automatically extracted components and zoom into my image. I know that a greenish yellowish signal is um, lo localized in mitochondria where there should be no chlorophyll. And I can select structures which I think are mitochondria and which are as far away from chloroplast as possible. I think this is good enough. Um, by using any of these tools, or I can select just single pixel by using the cross tool. Straight away I get spectra for this position from, and I want to annotate it as yellow. And the next component should be chlorophyll, 
and I will try to find the chloroplast which is not overlaid by mitochondria. So I will select it, let's say here, and this is red chlorophyll. I can proceed to linear mixing by clicking here. And here is my unmixed image. And you can see that I didn't lose as much information from the YFP channel now uh, because I had a much more accurate unmixing. And it's the, the same is true for the chlorophyll channel. These are the intensities which couldn't be unmixed and annotated as either component one or component two. So they went all to the residual channel. And again, when I pull up the intensities for YFP, I can see that the pixels where only chlorophyll should be present are black in my YFP channel. So the best way to make unmixing is actually to have lambda stack of your image, but it's not always available. There is a, you can create spectra for the fluorophores in your sample and save it to the database and then apply it later to your images. For example, I scanned with exactly the same settings a weld tap plant to detect what is the autofluorescence of the chlorophyll. And I have this lambda stack here. If I go to gallery, I can see that I have only one component here present now, um, and it's chlorophyll. And when I proceed to the unmixing tab, I can very easily select any pixel I want to create the spectra. And I can save the spectra into the database by clicking here. I can name it, for example, chlorophyll and save it. Optimally, I should also have a spectra for only YFP in my sample, but this is very difficult to achieve. And now I can go back to my lambda stack and I will try to find the component from the YFP channel, which definitely shouldn't contain any red fluorescent signal. And here it is. This is obviously not an optimal image because it's oversaturated. This curve should go higher than 255. And then I can mix this component. I will annotate it with yellow color from the chlorophyll by clicking on plus button here, I can add the chlorophyll from my database and select linear and mixing. And this is my mixed image. And it looks quite different from the selection made by the automatic component extraction. While the chlorophyll looks very similar, there is more signal removed from the YFP channel.